Okay. We left off Chav Gimel. Chav Gimel, first column, second paragraph. Paragraph me madlikin, Omer of Yudo. Lo bora HaKadosh Baruch Shalomu Elo Kedei Shehiru B'lefonov. HaKadosh Baruch created the world that mankind should, should fear him. Shenemar. Volokim Oso Shehiru B'lefonov. Quotes a posuk. Reb Simeon, Reb Simeon, Reb Lezer, Havi Yasi, Vecholef, Fozo, Reb Yaakov, Baracho. Reb Simeon and Reb Lezer, you have the place? Chof Gimel. Okay, you look up at the Gemara. So Reb Simeon and Reb Lezer, they were sitting, and Reb Yaakov, Baracho passed before. Amalei, Chad, Lechavi, Neko, Mikamei, the Dochel, Chatoinu. He says, we should stand for the man. Yeah, Reb Simon, two Amaroim, and Reb Loza, they were sitting. Reb Yaakov Baracha passed it before them. One says to the other, we should stand, we should acknowledge him. Why? Because he's a Yori Chet. He fears sin. This is Reb Yaakov Baracha. Omali Yidoch Neko Mekame, the Gavar Bar Uyinu. We should stand for him because he's a great Talmud Tochem. Bar Uyin, he's, he's, he's brilliant. Omali Aminloch, the Gavar, the Doch, the Tonu, the Gavar Bar Uyinu. He says, I'm telling you the reason why you should stand is because he's Yori Chet, because he fears sin. Which if you study the Mesut Sishorim, what's a Yori Chet? You know what a Yori Chet is? You're afraid of sin, meaning, he says two things. You do everything perfectly, but a person who really reveres Hashem and you don't want to violate his word, you're, the world is a minefield. You're always worried, do you know what the next moment will bring? That's Yerush HaChet. You're afraid of sin. It's like you're a minefield every moment. You're trembling. You may step on a mine. Every moment you don't know what the next moment will bring. Or you do a mitzvah and you're always concerned. You're always re-examining the mitzvah you did. Did I do it perfect enough? That's your That's Yerush HaChet. You're, fearing, you're fearful that you didn't make the grade. That's your level of reverence for Hashem. Okay? He says, I'm telling you, we should stand to acknowledge that he's Yori Chet, and you're telling me he's Barurian because he's brilliant, because he's Tal- Talmud Chochem. Okay? This time, the Rablazu, the Omar, the Gevet Dochel. Now, it says, one said one thing, the other one said the other thing. Now, who said what? Did Rablazu say he's a Yori Chet, and Reb Simon was the one who said Barurian? He was the Talmud Chochem, or was vice versa? Mar says, this time, the Rablazu, the Omar, the Gevet Dochel Chatonu. We're going to bring a proof that Reb Loz is the one who had said we should acknowledge him because he's Yori Chet. The Omer Reb Yochanan Mishum Reb Lozer. Reb Yochanan said to him, Reb Lozer, Ein la Kodesh Baruch Hu Olam El Yir Shemayim Belovad. HaKodesh Baruch all that he has in this world, he created this world, what's most important to him is Yir Shemayim. Shenema Va'ato Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu says to Kalal Yisrael, Mo Hashem Shol Mi'imoch, Kim Li'iro, what does Hashem want? He only wants liyiro. So what is, if that's what he's asking the Yiros, evidently that's primary. That's the primary reason why Kodesh Baruch Hu, what he values in this world. Uchsiv, and there's another posuk. Vayomad lo'odem hein yiros Hashem hi chochma. What's hein? Hein, so the Mara says, Shkein loshem yuvoni, in Greek, korin la'achas hein. I mean, the one thing, what is hein? The one thing, the, 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 the paramount is Yiras Hashem i Chochmah. This is Rashi's Chochmah, Yiras Hashem. What is the Rashi's Chochmah? That's Yiras Hashem. Hamaymer is a bull of vire legalos al madregas o malos a Yiro. This statement comes to reveal and to explain the level and the exalted level of what Yiro is. O bir dove zeh, ki olam nivra al yidei zeh, Shu Yisborach Ole Ela Olam, as he said earlier. What's what's Yiras Yiras Elokim? He said earlier. This cause and effect. You understand what are you? Why do you exist? Why does existence continue to exist? Mm-hmm. Every aspect of existence. You understand? There's a linkage between the effect and the consequence of the effect. Right? This cause and effect. Hashem is the cause. We're the effect. We're, we're the effect. We're affected by the cause. So what is so everything is what and that keolam nivra al day zeh she is baruch ole al olam. What is Hashem? Hashem is the Creator. Machadish tu b'cholim tov nasev God continuously renews acts of creation every moment. 
See, in the, in the bracha of Yotzeb Moros, Machadish to Choyim Tov Masiv Reishis, you can say that's speaking about creation. The luminaries, for the world to function, what about every aspect of everyone's existence? Maybe that not. That's, from that statement, it's not obvious. Because that, that, that's Birchus, that's, that's Moros. But the Chaim Belashim brings many, many sources, no, it's, it, it, which, of course, it's understandable. Why does existence exist? Because Hashem, no, there you could say, He provided enough, He provided the needs. But it's not an ongoing willing. But it, no, every aspect of existence, Hashem continuously wills every aspect of existence, not even a, a granule of sand, a microscope, whatever it is, every aspect of existence, whatever exists, He wills it, and if He should cease it to will it, what would be? It would revert back to pre-existence. It would be pre-existence. You know, it's interesting. It says by Kabbalah Satora, if the Kablu Mutav, if you accept the Torah, it would be good. And if not, Yaza Olam Latovavo, the word's going to revert back to pre existence. Right? So if you say that the world was created for Torah, that, that's the objective. Okay? But just, and if you say Hashem wills existence every moment, Hashem's not going to will existence. Unless it, it, it addresses that objective, right? So it's not going to address that objective. He's not willing it. But what about he's already set in place whatever it has to be? He doesn't have to will any longer. So why should he destroy the world? If initially, it's, I'll give you an example. I yeah, just drove down 30%, 37% sale, going out of business, not willing to renew a release. So they have an inventory. So what do they do? They put the inventory on the street? They sell out the inventory, then they close up. If everything's already in place, and I should put it in place, each human being, wait till everything is exhausted, then destroy the world. No, if you don't accept the Torah, Yazul Mutsulvo immediately. Because since existence is an ongoing willing, I'll, I'll, if I'm only willing at the cost, <coughs> so if that objective is not, it, it doesn't exist, I cease willing it. So if I shouldn't cease willing existence, what's the result of that? Reverts back to pre-existence. Because the first moment of existence and every moment of existence is a, the continued willing. He wills existence should exist. So that's the reason why, you know, the Rama, one of the Yud Gimli Kriya Muno, the 13th tenets, Hashem knows man's actions and man's thoughts. Right? He knows Machshov Sodom. The Machshov, he knows your thought. How do you know God knows your thought process? And what, 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 what tenet follows after he reward and punishment? Right? Which because one punishment is based on what? On, on what? On your thoughts. Is it the Shmo? Is it not the Shmo? Whatever the thoughts are. But how can he evaluate what you're deserving if he doesn't know what your thoughts are and what your feelings are? The answer is Hashem knows your thoughts. He knows your actions. He knows what you did, what you didn't do. That's reward punishment. And the quality of what you did. Was it deliberate? Was it defiant? Was it inadvertent? Whatever it was. Was it by rote? So that's Charvonish. But he has to know your Machshova and he has to know your action. Correct? So, but how does he know that? How does God know what you're thinking? Because the whole process, thought process, the chemical activity one's brain, why does it function in that particular context? And each person has his unique thought process. The answer is Hashem wills every aspect of existence, every moment, and every function of your body, of your existence is willed every moment. So, so of course he knows what your thought process is. Because he's directly involved in willing that thought process. <coughs> of course, you have bechira, you have choice to, in terms of direct and in what direction, what you want to think about. But the actual process, he's willing that process. So, of course, he knows your thought process. He, he, so, that's the cause and effect. Go ahead. He, Hashem creates that particular thought process for you? Or I'm confused because then where's our bechira, where, where's our free will there? The way it's explained is like this. You have a boat. You have a rudder. You have a current in the water. Okay? So the boat can go in any direction. Or let's say it's the current goes in one direction. But if you have that rudder, you could direct the boat to go differently. That's Bechira. The, the meaning, the flow of energy is there. You have the ability to think about anything you want. You're the rudder. You could turn that thought to A, B, good, bad, or neutral. You can, that, that's Bechira. But the, and that, that ability is also given to you. But to be able to do what you want, that's given to you. 
But the ultimate decision is whose? That's your decision. He's leaving it up to you. Right, so Hashem did not. See, so he's, not, he's not in any way affecting your Bechira. He's willing you have, that you should have Bechira. That you have, let's say a person doesn't have strength to turn the rudder. Right? You can, have, you can have the rudder, but if you can't physically move the rudder, the boat's going with the current. He gives you the ability to turn the rudder. That's what Bechir is. It's clear. Okay? So what does it mean? The world was created for Yerush Hashem. That, that's what he says. That's the Oleh and what? Hua Oleh El Olam. He's the cause of existence. So it's causing. I always say, if there is a, why is it so important to believe that there's a creator? Right? Why do we observe the Shabbos? Rashi says in uh, the Gemara says in Tchulin that if a person does not observe the Shabbos, as if he rejects the whole Torah in its entirety. Why? So Rashi explains because you're denying God. You're denying Hashem as a creator. Right? So whatever you're doing, so you, so it's cultural, whatever it may be, but it has nothing <coughs> to do with Hashem. But if you acknowledge that he's the creator, then the Torah has value. Because that's his Torah. He, that's his dictate. Now, if you acknowledge he's a creator, what, what lies in that, that acknowledgement? Avrami, what lies in that acknowledgement? If there's a creator, that means he had a reason to create. Right? If you don't believe there's a creator, everything's just random, okay, whatever it is. But if there's a creator and he created something very specific, you have to ask, well, why did he create? Right? Then you ask the question, why? But if you don't believe in a creator, there's no question, why? So the whole discussion of purpose only comes about if you, it starts with believing that there's a creator. If there's a bore, then we say, so why, why, why did he create? Then we can take it from there. You know, somebody says, yeah, I never thought about it. Like I once told over the story, start with Mr. in a second. So given to a to women, yeah. women, all, all college educated, they were older women already. So the oldest of the women who was there, it was somebody's mother, so I said, um, you know, why do you exist? Yes, good question. Did anybody ever think why he exists? So, you know, so see, this instance, I never thought about that. Wow. You know, the woman's in the seven, <coughs> she never thought about it, she's not alive anymore. Never thought about that. The most important question of a person's life what is my purpose in existence? How many people think about that? Well, to get a college degree, to earn so much, to have a house in the, the five towns or the Hamptons. Is that, is that a purpose? That in the summertime you have difficulty coming in because of, even if you come in early, it's not so simple. Is that a purpose? Evidently, it's more than that. Is it to satisfy your wife? It's not so simple. Okay? <laughs> You're wearing a bull, bull, wearing bull, profe bull proof vest? Okay. <laughs> No, this is Namora. This is Namora. Uh, Rebbe Lozer. El Lozer. That's Rebbe Lezer. Eliezer. Rebbe Yochanan. Rebbe Yochanan. Rebbe Yochanan is Namora. Rebbe Yochanan said the name of Rebbe Lozer. Yeah, look, it, because if you see the Gemara, well, always, Rebbe Lozer is always in Namora. So Rebbe Yochanan is quoting him, it's Rebbe Lozer. Rebbe Eliezer is the Tana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you have No, you have a car, it's Rebbe it's not Rebbe Leza. But if I, because in Amora, because Reb Yochan is in Amora, and Reb Simon is in Amora, these are Moroyim. It says Reb Simon says one thing, Reb is something else. It's not, it's his colleague, he can't be a Tana. It's Ribbelezer. It's Eliezer. There it's Eliezer. We'll look it up. We'll look it up. You look it up.